Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman, and this is the Lost V2 Shortboard. What's the story behind this board and how did it get its name? Uh, Matt Biolis was riding uh, a lot of hybrids, a lot of V2 rockets, uh, a lot of lazy boys, a lot of couch potatoes, and uh, a lot of his team riders, you know, the, the, he's shaping for the best guys in the world right now. Obviously, they're going to rib him like, hey, like, you should be riding like a real shortboard. Uh, he didn't want to give up wave count. Uh, he didn't want to give up just the fudge factor of like the forgiveness of a board like that. So this board actually with as much success as it's had on the pro tour uh, this, this summer, which basically every contest in California was won on a, on a Lost V2 short board this summer. Uh, it was actually derived from the, not the bro side, but the, not the pro side, but the bro side and Matt wanting to make a board for himself. So he took his uh, favorite hybrid, which was the Rocket V2 Rocket and extended the nose uh, outline uh, a little bit further forward to come to more of a pointed nose rather than a bullet nose like the rocket. And then he also took the tail and rather than having the tail end about right here, drew it into a more conservative squash. So basically just taking the, the rocket midsection, bringing it out a little bit and bringing it forward a little bit and then adding a little bit of extra rocker up front right here but still keeping the rocker flat through here. A lot of the foil in this board is exactly the same as the rocket, so it does have, especially in the domesticated dims, which we're gonna to get to a little bit later, uh, this board in general, both the pro dims and the, and the domesticated dims have a little bit fuller rail, and the foil is very similar to a rocket. So if you've ever ridden a, a V2 rocket or a V3 rocket and you like the way that that board feels, you're definitely gonna like this board as well. You wanna ride it a little bit bigger, obviously, because you gotta draw the nose and the tail out, but it's got a very uh, confident, positive feel and works in a, in a variety of ways. As far as the rocker on this board, it is flatter up front and then accelerated out the tail. So it is gonna paddle really well, glide into waves really well, glide across flat sections really well. But when you need it to turn, you just hammer on the back foot and it's gonna come around really tight. Uh, another thing that Matt's doing on these boards is uh, having that built-in lock on the tail, you're gonna see that the tail's got a lot of dome right here and the stringer's raised up. And so that's when you're pushing on it, your foot just naturally, it's like you've been riding the board forever. Like it's like sunk in the deck end. Like when you cave your boards in, you're like, oh, this thing feels great. And then the board's just about to break. He actually shapes the boards in that way. So it's called uh, having, the, having that raised center line so your foot just sits there like it's a ramp so it's not going to try and slide off the board. A lot of people are riding with that wax or if you're riding with a tail pad it'll actually curb the tail pad so it just gives you more leverage on turning the board. They're using a carbonless carbon on the tail so it's a reinforced fiberglass uh, tail reinforcement. You're going to start to see these white fibers now. These are directional fibers, very very strong, uh, no carbon in them but doing the same thing that the carbon was doing. Uh, and they're, they're all white now, which, like, which looks actually really cool against some of the uh, dips. And then also even on a clear whiteboard looks real trick this year. Just a great all around board. And uh, right now it's their most popular short board and available in two different dimensions. So let's cover that now. Uh, if you're looking at the Julian Wilsons, the Taj Burrows, um, the Mason Hose, obviously they're on the pro dimensions and those boards are gonna be narrower and thinner. Uh, and all the way up through, and, and they're going to run those boards, you know, from the mid fives up through about six four in pro dimensions. Uh, there's also a new line of domesticated dimensions, and those boards are wider and thicker per their length. And that's going to be good uh, for a bunch of different reasons. One is that if you find that uh, you, you come up against a ceiling of which, like, hey, I don't like riding a board longer than six zero because the waves where I'm at, they're real small and squat and hollow, and the longer boards just don't fit in the waves all that well. You can get a six zero with more volume in it by bumping up to the domesticated dims. Um, and then for the mere mortals in the world, like, like myself included, uh, that want to surf a short board but just can't do it, like, on a 28 liter board. Uh, this allows you to get a short board that's relatively short uh, and still has the float of a rocket. Uh, you could transition off of a rocket. You could transition even off of something like a Lost RV onto this board and it's accessible. Like you, you could paddle, you can catch waves, but then benefit from not having any swing weight forward on the board, which is going to allow you to come off the top a lot faster, allow you to drop uh, late into waves, both from the nose rocker and then also the 
the reduced width of the nose nut hanging up and cartwheeling you over the front on the wider boards and then also the faster rail to rail of something narrower but still have foam in the board still being able to catch waves and still having some glide in the way in, in the wave uh, that a, a zero foam board would so I think the domesticated uh, version is going to be very very popular as well wanting again as a cheater to be able to get shorter boards that are going to fit into the wave better for somebody that might need a little bit more foam and then also for the bigger guys uh, or for people that have just been riding hybrids for a really long time and they're like you know what I want something new this year I want a short board but I want I don't want to give up wave count and I want to be able to push on the board really really hard uh, the domesticated dims in this board are going to be super popular for that so it's the lost v2 short board and uh, this is good again it's going to be one of the most popular boards for loss this year